The training today is going to be on the Memberships module in Tendency. And are all of you currently using the Memberships module for your site? Yes. Good. Um, we're going to go over, um, it's going to be an overview of the Memberships module. Um, and there will be a more detailed question and answer session at the end. So um, don't worry, you can stop me at any time to ask questions or just wait till the end and we can go over some specific questions that you might have. Well, let's go ahead and get started. First, let's um, brush up a little on our intro to tendency training. We're going to talk a little bit about what the membership module is. And it's essentially the module in tendency that manages the membership status of your organization's members. You can set up uh, specific pricing for different membership types, like regular membership or student membership, or honorary membership. You also have the capability to have online membership application. Uh, you have online and offline payment of membership dues. Reminder notices for expiring members get sent out automatically, uh, reminding them to renew. And members can renew themselves uh, without any admin involvement, or the admin of the site can also renew a member. We have another module in tendency called the user module. And the user module is essentially the module that manages all of your site contacts, including members. Members are also stored in the user module um, along with site users. And how you can identify them in the user module is by the red um, member ID number in their user record. And members will also have a, a little icon next to their username that kind of looks like a man standing in a doorway. The image on the PowerPoint right now is three different types of records. One's an administrator record, one's just a member, and one's just a plain old user. A frequent question we get um, over here is what is the difference between site users and site members? Any person who makes contact with you through your website is considered a site user. Uh, members are considered a subset of site users, essentially site users with benefits. Members have a member number. Um, members expire, uh, whereas users do not. You can give uh, members special access to specific pages. Um, you can charge for memberships, whereas site users are free, and members can also receive other member benefits like member-only pricing uh, for certain modules in tendency. So let's talk a little bit about how somebody coming to your site can become a site user. Um, site users are, are essentially people that have registered with your site using the site registration form. <clears throat> Whereas for a member to become a member, you need to join using uh, a membership application. Once all the folks are in Tendency, um, Tendency tells the difference between users and members by looking for a, a specific field called the member ID in the user record. And that's that little field right here. As long as uh, a member is active, uh, meaning they haven't expired and they're in good standing, um, they will have a member ID in their user record. And this is what Tendency looks for whenever it determines if a member is eligible for member benefits. Any questions so far? I have a question. Yes. Um, oh, this is Stacy. So once a member expires, mm -hmm. um, does that ID number go away? And once they re-up their membership, mm -hmm. do they get assigned a new number, or does that number stick with them? The number sticks with them. Um, whenever you set up your memberships, you have the capability to designate how long after expiration will the member be allowed to renew themselves, um, how many days. So say, for example, they expire on January 31st and you want to give them two weeks after to renew, uh, they'll have that renewal period. You also specify another uh, criteria, which is called the membership grace period, and what that does is uh, that keeps the member ID in the user record. So you could have two different uh, durations. You could have a membership expiration, I mean a membership renewal period for 14 days, 
and say a membership grace period for seven days so they would have membership privileges for seven days after they expire um, and then on the eighth day they would lose their privileges because the member ID would be removed from their membership from their user record but they would still have uh, seven more days to renew does that make sense yes okay and then once they do renew then they'll get their same member um, ID back it'll stick with them for as long as as their member and as long as they they renew within the time frame specified by you and we'll look at that whenever we get to the section of the training that deals with setting up the membership application and all the different um, settings that you guys can can specify any other questions okay so we're going to move on to talk a little bit about what you can do with the membership uh, module. We're going to have a little overview and then we're going to probably flip over to the training website to, to demonstrate some of the things. We talked about setting pricing for different membership types. Um, you can have, you know, like a regular membership, student membership, honorary membership, and the like. And you can have unlimited number of membership types. There's no limit to the number of membership types that you can have. <clears throat> um, let's see. You can design a custom membership application where you can specify what fields appear on the membership application um, as well as the expiration date, the, uh, the membership renewal periods and, and grace period and other things like that. You can allow your members to create a business directory listing from your membership application um, as a benefit of membership. You can also set areas of your site for member-only viewing. Um, by that I mean restricting certain content to be only visible by members. You can also track online and offline payment of membership dues using the membership reporting options and we're going to take a look at that in a little more detail later on. Uh, you are able to allow special pricing option for members. For example, you could have member, non-member pricing for calendar events. So as a benefit of membership, they would have a, a lesser price. You can also create and send reminder notices for expiring members. These notices get sent out automatically. The admin um, sets them up once and they go out behind the scenes. Admin really doesn't have to do anything. Um, they have links in them inviting members to come back to the site to renew their membership and walk them through the whole process. And then for the members renewing themselves, it's pretty straightforward for them to renew. Once they, they receive their notice, they click the link, they come back to where their membership is, they click the link to renew, and they just walk through the process. So first we're going to talk about how to get started um, using memberships, and we're going to take a look at some of the specific details. Any questions so far? Okay. So the first thing you want to do before you uh, get started using membership the membership module in tendency is to create your membership types. Um, once you've created the membership types, then you want to design the membership application. Once those two things are in place, you'll be able to import or add your members, and then you want to play with the reports to see what your members are doing, how many new members have joined, how many have expired, who's renewing, and all that good stuff. So we're going to talk about membership types first. Um, you want to add the type of membership and pricing associated with the type. Like we stated earlier, Tendency can support as many membership types as you need. We're going to flip over to our training site and we're going to look exactly where on the Tendency site will you be able to do this. So just one second. Um, here we go. So we are looking at one of our training sites right now. Um, and everybody sees a website, right? Yes. Hello? I see it. Okay, good. Yep. So to get to the memberships module, you want to click on the memberships icon. Um, and of course, you're logged in as an admin right now. To get to the membership types uh, area, you want to click on where it says membership types over here, or you can click membership types right there. You can search 
to see the existing membership types. And this being the training site, we don't have a lot of membership types in here right now. Um, and if you needed to add a new one, all you need to do is just click Add, give it a name, give it a price, and then a description. The description that you give is just going to be the admin description or what uh, what the admin sees. So you could you could put any language in there that says whatever you need to relate to the membership type, like this type is for whatever specific purpose. When you're done, um, you want to click Submit, but before we click that, let's take a look at these other options. The Allow User option should be checked if you want folks to be able to select this membership type whenever they're joining. If you would like for this membership type to be a renewal only membership type, then you want to check this box. And what that means is, say for example you have um, a regular membership type, it costs $15 to join, um, but you want to charge, you want to uh, reward existing members when they renew. So you can set up a renewal type which is less. So it could be $15 to join as new, maybe eight dollars to renew and then if that was the case then you would check the box next to renewal and this type would only show or only be available to folks who are renewing. Um, we have another module that's called corporate memberships and if you wanted to associate the membership type with the corporate membership module you would check the box here um, but we're not going to talk too much about corporate memberships. Today we do have a separate training uh, for corporate memberships which will be on our calendar so you can check back there. I'm um, going to go ahead and click submit to add this type. Click search. And so now I have my new membership type right there. Um, you can also, going back to our PowerPoint here, you can also have what's known as an admin only membership type and a lot of folks use uh, that and by admin only it means that only admins have access to that type and for the most part you're going to set up free memberships in that way. So say you wanted to have an honorary membership or a lifetime membership for sp specific people but you didn't want to charge for it, you don't really want to give your public members the option of choosing a free membership type because they will. <laughs> and you probably don't want them to have access to that. So in that case, you can go back to here. Give it a name, and then you want to uncheck the allow user option so that it won't be visible for uh, just general folks that are coming to the site. It'll only be visible for admins. Any questions on the membership type so far? Alrighty. So once you've created your membership types, um, and like I said, you can have as many as you need uh, with as many different price levels as you need, uh, the next step is to design your membership application. Tendency allows you to custom design uh, a membership and we call it click click memberships because it's you can do it in in two or three or four clicks. Um, let's take a look. To design your membership, you want to start off at the tendency console and click on Design Membership App. That's going to take you to the membership applications module. Uh, you can click on Search to see what's already there, or you can just go ahead and click on Add to create a new membership. Um, Right now, Tendency only allows you to have one active membership at a time. Uh, I do believe that the, the programmers are working on the capability and having the queue to be able to have more than one membership application active at a time, but currently we only have the capability for just one. So let's go ahead and click on Add and step through the process. You want to give your application a name. We'll call it um, and then in the notes area, this is only for um, admin.
admins, so you can give a little description on what the what the application is for. And then hit submit. Next you have the option to build your own application or view templates that we have. Let's take a look at both options and see um, what they look like. So view template. If you want to click and view it, just click on here. And it's going to tell you, it's going to show you what the template looks like. And if you're happy with the items that it has, you can go ahead and click on choose this template or you can choose build your own template uh, and make your own or you can just custom from the from the get-go by clicking on the build my own. We're going to go through the build my own because I think that's the more um, popular choice for folks. And so from the from the build my own you're going to get to this screen. And here's where you choose what fields you want to have appearing on your uh, membership application. You can customize what fields are required, customize the mem member number format, the expiration date, introduction and member confirmation text, um, and a whole bunch of other things which we're going to take a look at. So on the first page, obviously the things that you have to have to add the bare minimum have on your membership app are the first name, last name, and email. Those cannot be removed. Um, all the other fields are um, at your disposal. So we could have first name, last name, company, address, address to city, state, zip, phone, mobile phone. Um, in the search view preferences, you can you can activate these and allow folks that are joining uh, to specify whether or not they want to have their information appear in the user or member search. Um, if you check these boxes, then these fields will appear, and it's a simple yes/no. In the other items, you have the user defined fields, which you can rename, relabel to to be whatever you need. Um, you also have the capability to set up the membership application so that folks can have a username and password. So I'm going to go ahead and select those two and then proceed to step two. Again, additional fields that you can have appear on your membership application. Um, say work experience, industry, You can also choose whether or not you want to gather referral source information. Um, membership type and payment method are mandatory. Uh, you don't have you don't have a choice in whether or not those display. They have to display. You can choose whether or not you would like the membership application to require approval of an admin before the member uh, gets their membership privileges. If you do need that, then you would check these fields. Um, and once they submit their membership application, even if they have paid online via credit card, their membership will still be in a pending status until the admin on the site approves it. The admin only section um, allows you to select which fields the admin can see, such as member ID, um, join date, renew date, expiration date, these are probably the more popular ones, um, but you have all of these options available to you. Then you proceed to step three. Step three has additional fields that you can display on your membership app, um, additional address, education, info, career, user groups. If you want to allow folks to be able to subscribe to user groups um, on the membership application, go ahead and check this box. Um, here's where you would specify whether or not a membership, a member could um, also submit a directory listing to the directories module with their membership application. Um, you can position this as sort of a member benefit. So if you join our organization, uh, if you join as a member, you get a free directory listing type of thing. And then if so, then you would specify what fields you want to 
have up here and I'm just going to check a bunch so we can take a look as, as an example. Proceed to step four. Step four is where you specify the expiration method for the individual members. You have four different options. You can choose for folks to expire annually on the day of the original join month. What that means is if they joined in January, uh, say they joined on January 15th, you would select a number here, so let's make it the fourth. Then when they first join, then their new expiration date would be the fourth of their original join month. Does that make sense? I don't think I explained that very well. Um, if they joined on June 27th, then they expire when they renew their new expiration date, regardless of when they renew, say they renew on um, May 31st, their new expiration date will be June 4th. You can choose whether, of course you have to check this box to choose it, you can choose whether or not they expire annually on the day of the renew month. So say they joined on June 15th, they renew on March 20th, uh, their new expiration date will be whatever number is specified uh, to match the renew month, which in our example was, I think it was March or May. You can specify whether or not they expire annually on this month and day, so it would be specific month and day, or you can specify uh, a solid date. Mm. Questions so far about the expiration method? All right. Here's where you specify the payment types for uh, that you'll be able to accept for memberships. If your site is hooked up to a merchant account, then you'll be able to accept online credit card payments. Uh, you can choose whether or not you want to allow cash or check, wire transfer, or send invoice. Most folks are going to be either using credit card, check. Some folks use uh, send invoice. I have not encountered any clients yet that use wire transfer, but I'm sure there's has to be at least one guy out there, or else we wouldn't have it as an option. So we'll we'll use these three guys um, as example. How soon before the membership expires can a member renew their membership? This allows you to specify um, the number in days, how far in advance before the member expires will they be able to renew. So you can put any number in here, or if you have it blank, then it's unlimited. They could join one day, and then the next day they could renew for the next year. How long after the membership expires can a member renew their membership? without starting from scratch. This is the membership renewal period um, ends site setting. So if their membership ends on January 31st, can you give them 30 days to renew? Beyond that, they're not able to renew themselves. They would have to start from scratch or an admin could renew them. How long after the membership expires can the members still enjoy member privileges? This is the membership uh, grace period that we talked about. and the, these numbers don't all have to be the same. You could have them. You could allow them to start renewing their membership seven days before they expired, allow 14 days after, and only allow them one day of membership privileges after membership expires. So it's really up to y'all. And the grace period, again, is how long the member ID stays in the user record. Uh, the member ID is what Tendency uses to verify your membership status and grant you membership privileges. Send members a reminder to renew. Uh, we used to be able to turn this on and off. Now it's completely automatic. Um, the reminder notices go out automatically. Require user login. If you check this, in order to join as a member, they have to at least be a site user. And we only recommend using it if you have serious trouble with spam. Um, 
nowadays I, I don't think that's going to be so much of an issue because we have CAPTCHA enabled um, on the membership app so I don't I don't foresee that you'll necessarily need to do this though we do have some clients that do require that they're for folks joining they have to be at least site users you are able to customize the member number um, the base number by default is going to start at 50,000 you can change that to be any number you want you can also include uh, letters or numbers as a prefix letters or numbers as a postfix um, to be in whatever I guess system you have every new member that joins is gonna start from whatever the base is you can also import members and specify member numbers um, and the numbers go up sequentially so no two members should end up with the same member number the last section here determines um, you can have CMS pages or content management pages where you can provide instructions or a welcome message and then you can choose that um, page to appear at the top or the bottom of the membership app but you have to create the page first so this would be at the top this would be at the bottom and this would be the confirmation um, once you've selected from the list you hit confirm and then you build your membership app so you have the opportunity to preview so we can take a look so this is the preview view of the membership application gathering info here these are some of the fields that we selected the membership type it's displaying all of the types because we're looking at it as, as an admin right now and the payment types displaying all of the payment types once again because we're looking at it uh, logged in as an admin this is the directory listing info this is where we said we wanted to allow folks to subscribe to groups and these are the two specific groups that are associated with the memberships module this is the admin only section uh, again visible only because we're logged in as ad uh, we're viewing the pages admin right now you'll notice that this preview page does not have a submit button this is not the actual membership application it's just the preview if you wanted to um, select a CMS page to display here you could click on this and you'll go back to here and then you'll select one from here preview again and now it has this little bit of text which it's not a real page so it doesn't really have anything on it so if you're done previewing okay we're here then you can activate it and what that does is it makes it the active uh, membership application on the site I'm gonna open up this training site on Internet Explorer let me switch over here because I'm logged in as an admin on um, in Firefox Oops. We'll take a look at the membership app. Any questions while the page is loading? No. Okay. So right now this is the current um, membership application that's in place on on this little training site. We're going to switch over and activate the guy that we just created. So I'm going to hit activate, and it's going to ask me the following membership application is currently in use that's the one we just saw in IE change it to this guy and I'm going to say yes change it the active application has been changed so now if I go back to IE oops with this guy and I hit refresh it should change 
And so, yeah, it changes to all this long story. So it shows my types right here. It shows my payment methods. And because I'm not looking at it logged in as an admin, I only see the ones that we specified folks could see, the payment types that folks could see. And then, of course, there's the submit uh, button at the end. Questions so far? All righty. Let's go back to our little PowerPoint. So we've set up the membership types. We've set up the, mem the membership application. Um, and we need to get the site ready for new members. It's very exciting. First thing you want to do is link to your new membership application uh, from your navigation. And you want to use this specific link. And we do have help files. And I will be sending you guys this PowerPoint. Um, which contain links to the help files that also describe in detail how to set up the membership um, application. You want to use this specific link that is on the page because what the link does is it verifies to see if a user is logged in or not and it also verifies to see if they already have a membership or not and if they do then it gives them the appropriate calls to action depending on the scenario. So if they're logged in as a user it'll say, hey, you're just a user, go ahead and go to the membership app. But if you're logged in as a member and you're trying to apply for membership, it'll say, hey, you're already a member and we're not going to let you join as a member um, because you already have membership. If you're an admin, of course, you'll bypass all of these checks and just go straight to the uh, um, application ad page because admins have all the power. So if we go over here, and we click on edit navigation we can add a new nav item we'll call it uh, join as a member and then we'll type in our link we'll add it and uh, I want to leave it right there so then I hit publish to publish my new nav and the link is there. Um, if I go back over to IE refresh, is it refreshing? Yeah, I think it's spinning. And I click on the link. it should take me back to the membership application. So if I was on the home page and I click on the link, it takes me straight to the membership application. Logged in as a admin, same thing. But of course I see all the other admin options including the admin only membership type and the extra uh, payment options as well. The next thing you want to do is change your site login page um, that so that it'll have call to actions for folks to join as a member. If we go back to this guy. If I click on this link here, it'll take me to actually I'm going to click on this guy and go to EN, which is the login page. Right now it doesn't have any text in here, um, but we're going to change the setting so that it'll have the call to action for membership and to do that you want to go back to where you're logged in as an admin and everybody sees the website right now right yes yeah. okay sometimes sometimes I switch screens and I forget to switch the go to meeting and it's a totally different thing and I'm talking about something completely different but y'all are not seeing it so I just want to double check um, so what you'll what you'll do is uh, there's a help file that talks about changing the login options on your tendency site and you can change the options right now this is the default you can change to allow for folks to apply for membership or apply for membership and join as a site user or a corporate membership and all that good stuff and that is controlled by a site setting called self add format in the user uh, module settings so if you're logged in as an admin 
uh, you want to get to your site settings, you can click here or you can click here. I'm going to go ahead and click here, site settings, under admin quick links. And right now that takes me to the global settings, but where I need to be is in the users module settings. So I'm going to click where it says more modules and click on users. And then I'm going to do a control F on my keyboard and that's going to bring up the little um, search thing here at the bottom and then I'm going to do a search for self add and I want to change that to the setting that will allow me to change it to allow for memberships uh, the call to action for memberships so I can click the link in the help file which will tell me what text I need to enter so for calls to action to apply for membership and, and register as a site user, enter membership in short. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go back to my self add format, paste that in, change, and then get the, red, um, the green check mark. Go back to my IE where I'm not logged in as an admin and refresh it. And it gives me these two links. If I wanted to change it to be just plain old membership, then all I have to do is just have membership in there. And then hit change again. Refresh. Wait a minute. I don't think it took my thing. Change. Okay. Refresh and it just gives me the one link to apply for membership. So folks don't have the option to um, register as site users, they only have the option to register as members. Questions so far? No. Nope. Okay, I'm going to change it back because this is probably the more common. Oops. Okay, I don't know if that's Alright, so I have my two links there now. Um, other, once you've done those two things, then the next thing that you can start working on is adding members to your website. And there's a couple ways that you can do it. Um, if you already have existing batch of members that you need to be added into your site, you can do a membership import. Or if you're starting brand new, never having used memberships before, this is a new venture, then Folks can just join through the website. Um, we have a couple different help files that talk about how to add members as an admin. Um, you can make existing users members as well as add directly through the membership application. So say for example, I'm going to go back to um, the tenancy console. Do a user search. So if you did a search for a user, you could convert that user to a member by clicking on more options and then choosing the option to add a membership. membership app would populate with that user's information and then you would have to fill out the rest of the information as needed and then submit Oop, make that active Oop, a member record already exists oh okay well I guess this email um, or this user is already in the system as a member, um, this being the training site of course. Not uncommon to have unexpected results like this, but that would be how you would do it and hopefully on your site the person doesn't already have a membership elsewhere um, and you'll be able to convert them in this way. You'll be able to choose a membership type as well as make a payment. The other option of course is to add them directly using the membership application. So you would fill out the application, select the type, make payment, uh, payment option. 
if you have their credit card information you can select pay online now and you'll be connected to the merchant account to uh, enter in that information and make the payment if they have sent a check or you're going to be invoicing them you can choose any of the other options and then as soon as you hit submit because you added them as a as an admin they're going to be active right away the other option of course um, is to do an import we have also help file that walks you through how to do membership import to get to the import uh, area close that guy, close that guy starting from the tenancy console you click on memberships to get to the memberships module and then in the memberships module you want to click on reports and then under imports you have the option to import memberships on this page you're going to want to before you're going to be able to import the members you need to format the members and we have a link here that takes you to the import formats that you can use and let's just take a look at an example so all it is is a CSV file um, that has the header row right here that dictates the order of which the information needs to appear so you would have to put all the first name under the first name column all last name under the last name column address under the address state under the state so on the different um, import formats the differences between these import formats is the higher the number the more fields they have so CSV 60 would have the most uh, goes on and on join date expiration date renew date and a whole host of other fields so depending on what your needs are you would select the, the membership import format based on that and we do have our help file that walks you through um, going back to the import page once you have your data formatted uh, you'll come back to this page and then you'll choose your key and what the key is is what tenancy uses to identify duplicates by so depending on what your key is uh, if you choose the default key is going to be email member ID first name last name phone so it's going to look at all of these fields and if it finds any matches it'll update accordingly based on your selections below so if it doesn't find a match then it'll add it as a new member but if it does find a match then it'll just update as opposed to insert into the database you have the opportunity to choose whether or not you want to override uh, blank fields or update all fields with new data and you can choose whether or not you want to add new users to a specific user group or not uh, over here is where you would generate new member numbers so if you were importing members that had member numbers specified in the import then you would want to uncheck this if you didn't have that then tenancy will assign the members uh, member numbers based on the criteria that you specified in the membership application you choose your membership format the authentication string is like an additional password that you're going to need to get from Shipple in order to import your data um, just send an email to support at shipple.com requesting the authentication string for your site we will verify your identity and make sure that you have the authority or security level to receive that information and we'll send it out to you and then you browse through the file that's on your hard drive the CSV the import format that you've created so you just browse to it wherever it is and then you hit upload the next screen is going to be a, a preview screen that you can review the records and confirm make sure everything looks okay and then you'll have uh, another opportunity to hit submit to, to do the actual import. Questions so far? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, regarding the import format, uh -huh. um, does the system guard against um, any, because I understand that there are different formats depending on which um, sheet you use or which format you use? Right. Will it guard against any um, mishaps in the case you use um, a different formatting 
um, in subsequent imports. What do you mean by mishaps? Well, what does it, what will this system do in, in the case where one time you import under CSV 30 and then um, another time um, you might use a different format not knowing that you used one before? A, a different one before. Okay. It's not really too fussed about which format you use. You can use CSV 30 one time, CSV 35 the next time. It's not really too fussed. What's more important is the key that you choose. Um, you want to make sure that the key that you choose applies to the data that's in the import as well as the, the data that's in the database. So, for example, uh, if you did a CSV 30 with your initial import and then you're re-importing six months later and you think you might have some people in the import that are already in the database, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you select a key that's going to uh, weed them out so that they don't get duplicated or you don't ha end up with duplicate records. Oh, okay. And the key is the, really the, the main thing that does that. So if you have, um, for example, member ID information, you would include that in your import format and it would use that as the key and if it found matches then it would not um, insert a new record, it would just update. Uh, if it didn't find a match then it would insert a new record. Whereas if you used email, mm -hmm. you could you could very well end up with duplicate because people may have changed their email uh -huh. and it's only going to be searching by this one key and if it doesn't find a match it's going to be like, well this guy doesn't exist, I'm, I'm adding him. Oh, okay. But if you chose member ID or email or one of these guys, member ID, email, first name, last name, then it has more things to look for to determine whether or not the person is the same or if it's a new, a new record. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I have um, one more question. Yeah. Um, in regards to sending out eBlast, are you going to go over that as well? Not in this training. We do have a uh, uh, alternate training on uh, newsletters on the newsletter module. Oh, okay. Um, um, go ahead. Oh yeah, because I just wanted to um, find out how to isolate um, messages that, or how how to isolate expired members um, from your user list. Okay. Is there a way to do that? We will talk about that a little later when we get into the membership reports area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. No worries. Any other questions? All righty. So that's how you add your members. You have your, um, you can add them, convert users to members, add them individually through the membership application. They can join themselves through the membership application, or you can do an import. Um, and now, we're moving over to the membership report section. Let's take a look at those reports. So if I'm in the membership module, um, starting from Tendency Console, click on Memberships, and then I can click on Reports, either right here or right there. It's going to take me to the Reports section. This being a training site, doesn't have a lot of information, um, but we do have a bunch of reports that you can use to uh, view your members current members, uh, current member roster. Actually, I'm going to go over to this other training site, which I think has some more information that might be able to give us a better idea. See, it has some graphs and stuff. <laughs> the other guy didn't have anything. Current member roster will give you a list of all the current people that are uh, active members. And you can print it out exactly how it appears on the screen quick list. Again, a different view. Name, company. Current member totals by company. Different view. And then members with no member ID. This is kind of like a, a list. If you were using if you required members to be approved by an admin uh, before their membership becomes active, you might have some people on this list and those folks would essentially be people that were needing to be activated by the admin. Um, I wish I had an example. This guy doesn't have any either. 
it would just be the the member number, the name, and then a, a button to activate the member. Um, and that's really all. You can also look at the membership trends of new and renewing members, active members year to date, and active members year to date by type. So at the top here it shows you the total active members and then new members joining and renewing members and the year to date total. Um, these numbers may not match. Membership data changes day to day um, and what this does not account for is active members that are neither new nor renewing, they're just active. So don't be don't be confused if if the numbers aren't matching or adding up to what you think that they should be. Just bear in mind that this report is only counting new and renewing members over time, not active members that are neither in renewal status or haven't renewed um, or new. We look at the year to date details. It shows us. Um, I wonder if there's anything for 2008. Eh, not so much. It shows us the uh, number of new members, renewing members, versus the total number of active. So on our little test site here, we've only had one new member join, um, but we have 156 active guys. The little note at the bottom explains how the calculations are made. The count of new members is based on the join date. Renewing members is based on the actual renew date, and the total active member calculation may not be available for some months. Um, the count for a specific month is initiated and stored on the first day of the following month. So the count for January would be uh, effective on February, and the, ac the accurate count for February would only become available in March. Does that make sense? The other report that we were going to take a look at was active members year to date by type. So it breaks it down by the different membership types that you have on your site. New versus renewed versus expired. Um, and the total number of active. So according to our little chart here, no new membership types. Oh, just one guy here. Nobody's renewed. A couple folks have expired. And these are the remaining total active uh, for February. Go back. I can look at 2008. Um, and of course, this being the training site, it doesn't surprise me that there's a whole bunch of zeros. Um, so we can go back to our reports. Other reports that are going to be useful is the new member report, renewed, expired, members coming up for um, renewal. So let's take a look at that. So new member report gives you reports on who's joined within the last month, three months, six months, year, five years. And it has a link to their membership record, as well as displays their member number and their join date. Um, you are able to sort these columns. As well. Where's that guy? Renewed members, similar report. How many re members have re renewed within the within the time frame specified? Takes it to their membership application. Expired members. Okay, we have some expired members, and it shows you by the expiration date as well. Members coming up for renewal. 
in the next three days, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, and 90 days. Pending memberships, these are folks that are joined but still in pending status, either because they're awaiting admin approval or they didn't complete their payment or anything like that. Whenever uh, a member joins through the site, the um, person who will be receiving notifications that a new member has joined is listed in site constants for the site and they will get an email notification saying a new member has joined um, with a link to their membership application and if it requires approval there will also be a link to approve the membership application and essentially as an admin you'll come in and click on you'll click the link in the email and it'll take you to their membership application and you'll scroll down and you'll just edit their status detail from pending to active and hit edit and that'll update their their status um, the person that gets notified is listed in site constants and to get to site constants you start from the tenancy console click on manage users go to H for site constants and the constant key that you're looking for is called membership recipients and whatever email is listed in here is going to receive notifications that a new member is joined uh, or membership renewal reminders have gone out anything to do with the membership module you can have as many emails as you want in here they just have to be separated by commas um, going back to our reports we also have another report for memberships in grace period and these are folks that are in the grace period they have passed their expiration date but remain in active status and what that means is they still have uh, membership privileges based on the specifications in site settings here's our link to import we also which we looked at earlier we also have capability to export the memberships um, let's take a look at that You can choose to export um, as a CSV. You can choose to export by status detail or break it down by only active members, pending members, paid, pending approval, expired members, so on and so forth. Uh, bear in mind that uh, when we were customizing the membership application, some of the fields that you are gathering data in the membership application don't write to the membership table they write to the user table so when you do a membership export it's only going to export the information that actually exists in the membership table of the database so some fields like referral source or um, and I'm not even sure if that's a specific one um, or alternate address are not going to export um, and I can show you guys where to do an export that will get you that info in a second of course you're going to need your authentication string and you can get that from Shipple we'll verify your identity make sure that you have uh, security clearance to get that info and then you hit submit and then it creates a little export for you and uh, it has all the member data we have another two other options export by join or renew date and or export by expiration date you can specify a date range status detail as well um, put in your authentication string or the expiration date specify by date range questions so far about the exports we also have a report that has to do with the financial data for memberships which gives you I don't know if we're going to get any info from this guy. Oh, okay, good. But it does give you an idea of um, how much money you're, how much revenue you're taking in through the memberships module based on um, 
the invoice amounts, payments, and if there's any balances. So for this particular training site, the supposed invoice amount is 141 and the balance due is 85 so we're not really making money with our memberships on this training site we need to do better um, but you do are able to have access to that info um, default expiration dates And default join dates. Let's take a look. Okay. So those folks that are listed on there, they don't have um, an actual expiration date. They're just going back to the default date set by the system. And in most cases, it's just going to be folks that are in pending or their their application is was abandoned at some point. Um, the other default join date, there's nobody under that report. So it would be the same case where their join date would just uh, be at the 1900 year. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to show you another um, area here on the reports page. Um, if you click on manage, uh, we're going to get, we're going to talk about renewals in a second, but what I wanted to show you is a lot of times on, uh, in our support team we do get requests from clients that want to, for whatever reason, reset their members' expiration dates to some date in the future. Uh, you have the capability to do that as an admin through your site by clicking on manage in the membership module and you can reset the expiration date by type, by join date, or by current expiration date. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to set a range of dates like everybody who's expired from May 1st to June 15th has a new expiration date of August 31st. We're not able to do that. What we can do is uh, set a specific date uh, in time. Uh, if you choose by, you can choose by specific membership type or do all. You can update all members, meaning uh, active and expired, or update active or update expired only, and set the date to some point in the future. And you're going to need your authentication string. And I'm going to do it. It gives you a list of all the members that were um, updated. You can also do it by join date. Um, unfortunately, it has to be a specific date, can't be a date range. Or you can do it by current expiration date. So again, specific date, not a date range. Alrighty. So that's that for the reports. Let me know if you guys have any questions um, about the reports right now. If not, we're going to move on to membership renewals. Uh, we spoke earlier about how the renewal notices go out automatically. Uh, the, when you first get your tenancy site, you have, I think, five system-generated notices automatically uh, that uh, you can customize. You can add new notices to the site um, and the notices include a link directly to the members renewal page and the renewal reminders run behind the scenes. So if there's any customization as an admin you just do it one time and then the reminders just go on on their own. And let's take a look at where in the site you can get to those. If you are starting from the tenancy console click on memberships click on either uh, notices right here that takes you to the notices module all the guys that have the yellow background are the system generated notices they cannot be deleted uh, there's no trash can but they can be uh, edited customized 
uh, to change the content. Typical uh, notice, membership renewal reminder one day after expiration. Let's take a look at that. Let's see, does it have any content? Sadly, no. Let's see if this guy has any content. All right, this guy does have some content. So the name of the notice is what appears in the list. You can choose how long before, after, at the time of uh, the join renewal date, expiration date. Does the notice go out? You can specify notices to go out to specific membership types, or if you don't specify, it'll go out to all membership types. Subject line is what appears uh, to the recipient, and the sender is the email address of the person um, who is sending out the notice. The system-generated notices are going to contain language like this uh, with the little, the words in the little brackets, and these words are pulling directly from the database, so you don't want to change them. Uh, because if you change them, then it won't pull in the right information. You can add additional text in here, whatever you need. Um, you can add images uh, as well. Some folks have really customized membership notices with their logo and all kind of super stuff like that, and you can do the same. The default notices are going to be the join autoresponder, so at the time of join, folks are going to get a note saying thanks for joining. You can specify a new notice to go out, say, 14 or 7 days after they join that says, hey, how's, how's it going? How's, how are you enjoying your membership? Do you need anything? Um, renewal autoresponder goes out when they renew. Thanks for renewing. We're so glad that you decided to renew. And then the, the renewal reminders before expiration after expiration and so on. Um, if you wanted to add a new notice you can click add or you can clone an existing one. Um, I don't know if this guy has any content. I think that guy had content. Let's clone that guy. So it's going to clone it with all the stuff. You can give it a new name. Hit submit. And then search. And then there's our guy right here that we just cloned. And if we decide we don't want him, we can just delete him. If you, for whatever reason, do not want the membership notices to go out, um, you can edit the notice by clicking on the pencil, scroll down and change the status to inactive and the status detail to admin hold, and that will prevent the notice oh, from going out. Any questions so far? We do have a help file that talks about setting up the renewal reminders. Um, and then Tendency also gives you multiple ways to renew your members. You can renew as an admin. You can renew multiple memberships uh, at one time. And of course, members can renew themselves without any admin involvement. So let's take a look at that. Uh, click on Memberships to go back to the module. Click on Search. Any memberships that are in renewal status will have the little yellow link. Unfortunately, not seeing any of those guys in this test site. Let's go over to the other site. and see if we have any members that are in renewal status. Oh, we have one guy. Fabulous. So he, this particular member is in renewal status. Um, to renew as an admin, you could just click on Renew. On the other, on the other side, 
you'll notice that some guys are uh, past their renewal period and are only eligible for admin to renew. So as an admin, you can click that uh, and renew those specific guys. If you had a bunch of members that you wanted to renew at once, you would click on, again, starting from Tenancy Console, Memberships. You can click on Manage. And then you have the option to renew multiple memberships. Click that guy. You can choose to select by company if it exists or not. Um, or you can choose to select by uh, membership type and anybody that has expired before a specific date and all of those people would show up in the list um, and sadly on the training site there's only one person so imagine if you will a whole bunch of people select all you can choose to create one single invoice or a separate invoice for each person listed and then the payment options depending and then once you have made your selection go ahead and click renew and then all those guys would renew at one time. Questions so far? Alrighty. Well, I think we're kind of gotten to uh, all the topics that we were going to cover in the intro to memberships uh, training this afternoon. Um, any questions? No? No. Okay. Well, let's take a quick uh, recap. Uh, we talked about the difference between site users and members and that um, anybody who makes contact with you through your site is considered a site user and members are kind of like a subset of site users and they have they can have special privileges that site users don't. Members expire. Site users do not. You can charge for memberships. Site users are free. Um, members can have access to specific member-only pages. They can have member-only pricing for event registration and things like that. We went over the different things that you can do in the membership module. Uh, we also talked about how to get started with memberships, uh, creating your membership types, customizing your membership application, how to get the members into the site, how to edit your navigation to point to the membership application. Uh, we went over how to import uh, renewals, different ways that folks can renew, and the renewal reminders. And we also talked about the multi-renewal, as well as the different reports that you have available to you as an admin uh, for the membership module. I do have one quick question. If you have a membership type, yep. Um, that does need, can you um, alter your membership type so it, there's one particular type that would need admin approval but the rest would not? Yes. Do you want me to show you how to do that? That would be great. All right, let's go back to our site here. So um, over here in the memberships module, I'm going to click on types. Uh -huh. And so you said you wanted to alter or add a membership type? It would be altered. Okay. So I'm going to search on my membership types. And I'm going to change this guy over here to be just admin only. So all I do is just edit, and I uncheck the box next to allow user option. Oh, so, well, that would mean that the person couldn't apply for it? That would mean that the only people that would have access to this membership type would be admins. Oh, okay. So basically what I'm asking is if there's a, a membership type that you can apply for uh -huh. um, that's available on the site, um, but it does you know, that particular type of membership um, needs approval where other ones don't need approval? Is there oh, a way? I see what you're saying. Unfortunately, no, we don't have a way to, to break it up like that. You can only specify whether or not all folks joining require admin approval versus none. Okay. All right. But that was a good question. Thanks. Any other questions? Well, we, like I said earlier, we will be sending out the uh, PowerPoint, which has links to the help files. And we do have help files online uh, broken down by the membership module, as well as 
we have a bunch of help files in here for the memberships module as well as help files relating to the uh, membership application, how to set it up and the different things that you can do. And if you do have questions, do contact the support team at support at .com. There's eight of us um, who get email at that address, so uh, at any given time we have a support person on duty that's able to respond to your requests. You can also call in to our main line and have extension, ask for extension 411, ask for the support team, and we'll be able to take care of any questions that you have. Um, and really that's all I have for you guys today, um, if you guys don't have any other questions. That's a wrap. I thank you guys for sticking with me this afternoon. My name is Carrie Gale. Um, if you need anything, you can just call. I'm part of the support team as well, so you don't necessarily need to ask for me. Um, but if I'm available, I will be able to take your call. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.